Hey everyone, welcome to your sixth C++ Qt game tutorial. Now I've made a couple of changes to the code that we've been working with so far. Um, what I did was I took all the code that I was previously in main, so the main was really long and cluttered. I took all of that code and I put it inside a new class that I created called game. The game class um, derives from QGraphics view, so it's a widget. And it has a pointer to the scene and a pointer to the player which will make um, extending our game much easier. Okay, so I've not added any new functionality. I just moved all the code from main into a separate class called game. Okay, I wanna start off this tutorial by talking about a concept, um, the concept of parents and children. All QGraphic items can have parents. Now when a parent QGraphic item gets deleted, all of its children also get deleted. This can be useful when um, items are, uh, they belong together when they're grouped. So for example, if you want to create um, a tank object, you may have a Q graphics item that was a rectangle, we'll call this the base, and you may also have another Q graphics item that represents the turret. Now if you make the uh, base the parent of the turret, whenever the base gets deleted, so does the turret, which makes natural sense because you can't have a tank without a base. You can't have a functional turret without a base. Now if the turret or the child gets deleted, the parent does not get deleted. Okay. Um, now the next thing I wanted to do was to create a score um, for the player to see. As they kill enemies, their score will be increased. So you can use a class called QGraphics text item, which is obviously um, deriving from QGraphics item. Uh, so you can put it in a scene, and basically a QGraphics text item is a text that you can put into a scene. So we're going to have our score class derive from the QGraphics text item because it too is a text that goes in a scene. So let's create a new class, add new header file, we'll call it score, and then add a new source file, also call it score. <clears throat> Let's include the proper thing. So let's include Q graphics text item. Let's create a constructor. Okay, and we want our item to also take a parent as an optional parameter. So Q graphics item, a pointer to a, um, a Q graphics item. And initially, this pointer is going to be equal to zero, so it's a null pointer. Um, so by default, if you don't give a, a Q graphics item a parent, then it doesn't have a parent. It, uh, but you can choose to pass in a parent. Okay, so we created our constructor, um, and now we want to have a private variable called score, and this will just keep track of what the current score is. Um, additionally, I want to add a member function called increase score, or just increase, and this will simply increase the score. I'll probably also need a getter, so I'll uh, write a member function called get score, and this will simply return the score. Um, now let's now that we have our member functions declared, let's define them. Okay, let's include. Um, score and then in here we want to call the uh, the super classes or the base classes const uh, constructor passing in the parent so the base class for our score class is Q graphics text item and this class will take care of assigning the parent to our custom score class. So now, just like all the cue graphic items, our own custom cue graphic score item um, can have a parent too. Okay, so inside the constructor, we first want to initialize the score to zero. Um, and then we actually want to draw the score, I guess. So draw the text. Okay. Um, so the QGraphics text item has a member function called setPlainText, 
will, which will basically set the text of the item. Um, so let's set it to score plus whatever the current score is. But we want to convert this number to a string, and we can do that by using a static function defined in the QString class. So QString, and that static member function is called number. You give it an integer, and it will give you a string. We also want to convert this const car into a string, just because you can't add a, a QString in a const car. So now our score will be something like this. It will look like this. Okay, but this is very plain, and I want to uh, make it look a little prettier. So the first thing I want to do is change the color. Set default text color, and I want to set it to um, the color object red. Or actually, I want to set it to blue. Um, and additionally, you can change the font, such as the uh, actual font style and the font size. You do that by calling a member function called setFont, and you pass in a QFont object, which simply represents um, sorry, which simply represents a font. So the font object, the first parameter is a string that names the font. I'm just going to choose times, and the second parameter is an integer that determines the size of the font, and I'm going to choose 16. So the QFont object takes two parameters. The first one is a string. That's the, uh, basically the name of the family of the font, so I'm choosing times new Roman. And the second string is an integer that represents the size of the font. Okay, and I have to include QFont for this to work. All right, so we initialize the score to zero, and then we actually drew the text. And now let's go ahead and define the remaining members of our score class. So the increase member function will just increase the score. And then the get score member function should just return the score. OK, so it looks like we've defined our score member function or a score class. Now let's actually create the score. Remember that the game class that we created has a pointer to the scene and the player. So let's also give it a pointer to the score. So let's include the score. And then let's give it a pointer. And then inside its constructor, let's actually make a score. So right after creating the player, I want to create a score or create the score. OK. And we want to actually add this item to the scene. Remember that all QGraphics items have to be added to a scene in order to be visualized. So our game class has a reference to the scene. And we want to use the add item method of the scene to add the score. OK, so let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's run it. <clears throat> um, now, you guys remember how to solve these unresolved external symbol problems. They usually occur when you add a new class. So just do build clean all, build, run QMake, and then run it again, and that should fix it. OK, there we go. Now we have a score. Now the next thing that I want to do is um, I want to increase the player score whenever you destroy an enemy. So let's go ahead and go inside the enemy. Or actually, let's go ahead and go inside the bullet. Let's look at the move method of the bullet. Let's get rid of this. Um, and then. So what we do in the move method of the bullet is before moving the bullet, we check what it's colliding with. And if it's colliding with an enemy, we destroy both the bullet and the enemy. But in addition to that, I also want to increase the score. So in here, we want to increase the score. So we need access to the score object. Well, what has access to the score object is the game object. Um, and what I've done is I've made the game object global. That's because a lot of my other objects will need to access this game object. So you just make it global inside the main, um, inside main.cpp. And then anywhere that you want to use this, you just, um, I'll show you how to do it. So for example, we want to use it inside the bullets move. So inside this file, I just have to, um, I have to do extern that. And this basically says that 
there is an external global variable, um, let's say global object called game, which is of type game pointer. Okay, so now when we want to increase the score, we just want to access the game score object that we created, and we want to call its increase member function. Okay, let's run this. <clears throat> oh, seems like we have a little bug. Okay, so let's go inside the increase member function, and as you can see, we increase the score, but we don't actually update the text. So we actually have to update the text. We have to redraw the text, in a sense. Let's copy and paste this code. And um, actually, we don't need to set the font and the color because we already set that in the constructor. But let's actually set the score to a new, uh, a new value. So this line of code. Um, so basically, whenever the increase member function gets called first, the score attribute gets increases, and then the text is updated to resemble this new score attribute. So the score could be something like 2 or 1 in this case. Let's run it and see if that fixes our problem. There we go. So now as you destroy the enemies, you gain one point. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to do is um, when the players go off the screen at the bottom, I want to subtract a health from the player. And I also want the health to be written down here, similar to the score. So once again, I'm going to um, copy and paste code from score and add it to a new class called health. Now remember, in general, you never want to copy and paste if you're planning on releasing something because it's just a bad idea. Um, but to save time, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So create a new class, and we'll call it health. Don't worry about that. OK, and then. Create a new source, we'll call it health. Okay, so let's just copy and paste the score code inside our health. And let's change a couple things. We want to call it health. We want to change this. Okay, um, instead of increase, I'm going to make a function called decrease for the health. And obviously, we want to call it, for the getter, we want to call it get health. And we want to change this name from score to health. OK, everything looks good here. Now let's go ahead and copy the implementation file. Paste it in our health implementation file, which I believe I added. OK, and we want to include health.h. And then let's change these. Uh-oh. Made a mistake there. So the constructor again will initialize not the score because this is the health. So we want to set the health to, I want to start it off at three. And then I want the text to say health, not score, obviously. And I want it to represent the health. Um, I also want to change the color from blue to red, which makes more sense to me. And uh, remember, we renamed the increase to decrease. And decrease will simply subtract one from the health. And it will update the text. Let's change our comment to it's good practice. Health. And initially we made our health three. If we subtract one, it would be two. OK, so everything looks good here except this, get health and it will return the health. OK, everything looks good. Now let's go back into our game and also um, give our game object a reference to the health. So let's include it first. Include health. OK, and let's actually create the health um, object inside the constructor. So right after we create the score, we're going to also create the health. And uh, we want to change the position of the health, because right now the score and the health text will overlap. So we want to move the health a little bit down. So we use the setPosition function. You may remember this from earlier tutorials. 
and we wanna we want the x to say the, to stay the same, so we do hell x, and we want the y to be its current y and shift it a little bit down. I would say shift it 25 pixels down. And then we want to add the health to the scene. Okay, so we've added it. Um, let's see if it shows up. We have a syntax error, health set position, health x, and health, oh, I forgot the y position here. That was a silly mistake. Okay, we got an unresolved external. Again, we know how to solve that usually. Let's run it. Okay, now we have some real bugs. Um, is not a class or namespace. So inside, oh, inside health, there should be no score. That was also a silly bug. See how um, how many bugs copying and pasting can introduce? That's why it's recommended not to do it. Okay, so we have a score and we have a health. Our score increases, but our health doesn't do anything. I want the player's health to decrease when um, one of these enemies goes off the screen. So the goal of the player is not to let these enemies off the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and go inside the enemy. Let's go look at the move member function. And basically, before destroying the enemy when it goes out of bounds, we just want to decrease the score. So again, we need access to this, um, I'm sorry, decrease the health. So we need access to the health, which means we need access to the game. So there's an external variable, um, there's an external object of type game pointer called game. And we want to say game uh, health decrease. Okay, and let's go inside the decrease and make sure, okay, everything looks okay. Let's see if this runs. So let's let um, these enemies go off the screen at the bottom and see if our health goes down. Oh, there we go. The health goes down. And let's see how much time I have. Okay, it's been way too long, so I'm going to stop right there. Um, I'll pick up in the next tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you join me for the next tutorial. Bye-bye.